Hello there, uh, my name is Jason King. I'm an exercise physiologist and I'd be delighted to, to present on the benefits of Nordic walking um, to the, the general population as well as specifically to um, our Meniere's uh, disease population. Um, and I'd like to firstly thank you and uh, for, for inviting me to present. I know we've had a few speed humps along the way in trying to, uh, yeah, with the aim was to have this webinar uh, presented live where we could uh, have a little bit more discussion. Obviously that hasn't happened, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm at least happy to have been able to record this um, presentation for you. Um, and as I'll mention later, I'll be more than happy to, to answer any questions um, following the presentation uh, via email or however you'd like to get in touch with me. Um, before I get on to myself, I'd like to just give you a bit of a background in terms of where I come from, from a, a, a workplace uh, perspective. So um, I'm an exercise physiologist with Advanced Rehab Centre, otherwise known as ARC, and we are specialists in the neurological rehab and recovery space. So we have two clinics in Sydney, one in Artam and one in Hurstville. We have a community team as well that, that will pretty well service um, most of Greater Sydney. Um, and as you can see there, we're a multidisciplinary uh, team. So we have um, neurological physios, occupational therapists, um, EPs, which is myself, um, allied health assistants, orthotists, and also housing solutions with SDA. So uh, we aim to be sort of the, 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 the one-stop shop um, for anyone that does have those sort of chronic conditions or neurological or complex conditions. I should mention as well, we do have a couple of um, vestibular um, specialists, so vestibular physios who specialize not only in the neurological conditions, but also vestibular conditions. Um, so that's us in a nutshell, that's Advanced Rehab Centre. Uh, and now who am I? Uh, so as I said, I'm Jason King. Um, I've been an exercise physiologist for, um, I should have done the maths on this, over a decade. Um, and I've been with Advanced Rehab Centre um, for around seven years as well. Um, I'm very passionate obviously around the rehab world. Um, and I specialize um, in sort of Parkinson's disease as a, as a relatively niche um, condition that I work with quite predominantly, um, as well as in every other condition that we have. So MS, stroke, brain injury as well. Um, I've got a real passion around sort of where I've coined the term undercover rehab and that is, uh, and how I explain that is sort of sports, leisure activities, other um, activities that still have the benefits of rehab, but don't feel like rehab. You know, I, I've worked with, we work with people for over a long period of time as these conditions are quite chronic and long-term. Um, and we really see that kind of therapy fatigue creep in over time and people get a little bit, um, whether it's just you know, general general boredom of, of the rehab world or um, just worn down by it. So I'm, I'm a big believer in sort of adding some variety in and um, you know, anything that is active um, and, and enjoyable and potentially have those social elements as well. Um, I'm a big, big believer of and a big advocate for. So um, that's kind of where my sort of specialist and my passion um, comes from. And I think Nordic walking really falls into that category where um, it's social, it's something novel and new, uh, but you're also getting all these other sort of rehabilitation, physical benefits alongside as well. So that's kind of what we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later on. Um, in terms of sort of Nordic walking and my history around that, so I've done the Nordic walk or the certified Nordic walking instructor course. Um, this was probably again, probably seven or eight years ago now. Um, and I found it to be a really useful tool for a variety of different conditions and a variety of different people. Um, Parkinson's and MS are, are, are two conditions that come to mind um, where, where I've had a lot of success. Um, functional neurological disorder as well. I've had a lot of success working with people and introducing it to those. Um, and, and again, I, I probably want to emphasize at this point again, my advice today is obviously going to be quite general and uh, in nature and, and one person with Parkinson's could really benefit from Nordic walking and another person um, A, just might not be suitable for a, a number of reasons or B, just maybe not sort of fall into their groove with it and, and don't find it as beneficial. So um, really important that we take it, hopefully you take everything as I say, kind of on an individualized and specific uh, basis. Um, and another disclosure I wanted to mention as well is that I'm not an expert on vestibular conditions, nor am I an expert specifically on Meniere's disease. Um, I've, I've searched all research articles high and low and, and unfortunately I haven't found any research looking specifically at the benefits of Nordic walking um, to, or with Meniere's disease, um, nor have I found any research on uh, Nordic walking for any other vestibular disease. Having said that, my presentation today will call, talk about 
um, the benefits of Nordic walking compared to regular walking, which I think would be obviously translating to, to those of you living with Meniere's disease. And I've hypothesized a little bit later on as to potentially some of the benefits that Nordic walking could have specific to Meniere's disease. Um, so that's all the disclosures out of the way. Now onto my presentation. So I'm gonna be talking all things Nordic walking um, and we're gonna be talking about why I think you should add it to your exercise toolkit. Um, and I say add um, specifically there because it's definitely not a replacement to um, traditional forms of, of rehabilitation or exercise, but it can be a really nice adjunct um, to, to build on top and uh, build on top and bolt on to everything else that you're doing. And as I said, adding a bit of variety and has those social um, social benefits as well. So that is what we'll be talking about. Uh, my objectives for today is to have you come away from this presentation understanding what is and what more importantly is not Nordic walking, because I've seen uh, a couple of, uh, I've seen some wacky attempts at Nordic walking that don't quite match up. Um, we're gonna be talking, as I said, around the benefits of Nordic walking compared to regular walking, uh, of which there is quite a few research studies. So I'll be able to give you some sort of cold hard facts um, and objective um, answers and, and ideas around that. Um, and then we'll be talking a little bit around sort of the, the understanding or hopefully you are understanding the benefits of Nordic walking for, <coughs> excuse me, for specific conditions. Again, not much research on the vestibular side of things. There is a lot of research on Parkinson's and MS, which I thought I will throw in there uh, because I think some of those things may ring true for you. So in order for us to figure out what Nordic walking is and for you to get a picture, obviously very difficult for me to um, demonstrate this over this format here. So what I've done is gone out and done a little pre-recording of myself Nordic walking, and then I have commentated over that. So um, you won't see my lips moving live because I've done the pre-recording on top of this. Um, things to keep an eye out for as I sort of talk through this, the technique is sort of what the what's happening with the arms and comparing it to what you would imagine a normal walk would look like. So um, I will stay silent and, and uh, hand things over to past Jason for a minute. Okay, so this is our crash course in Nordic walking technique. And before I show you what Nordic walking is, I need to show you what Nordic walking is not. And this is generally what I see uh, when I get people to demonstrate what they think Nordic walking is. And this is what I would describe as hiking with poles. So the tips of the poles are out in front of me. I've got bent elbows and occasionally I'm having to look down to check where those tips of the poles are. This is not, generally speaking, an efficient, normal, in inverted commas, gait pattern. Okay, and this is as you would normally see someone doing this out on a bush trail. You've got two extra um, contact points for su support and stability, but this is not Nordic walking. You can see there, bent elbow, um, and again, the tips of the poles are in front of me, which is key. This, on the other hand, is Nordic walking. And first things first, I want you to delete the poles from your imagination there and just have a look at the way I'm walking. That is just, to me, that looks like a nice power walk. And that is exactly what Nordic walking is. It is, it is an exaggeration of a nice normal gait pattern. The main difference being, or the really only difference being, is that instead of me swinging my arms against thin air, I've now got poles and I'm actually pushing against the ground which is giving me some propulsion and giving me some engagement in my upper body. And we're gonna talk about that in a little bit more detail. This is a great example here because you'll actually see the lady up ahead and you can see that our walking, if you eliminate the poles, looks very similar. We've got our opposite leg, opposite arm working together. You can see here, little sneak preview for what's to come. You can see I'm engaging my arms as I push off. We're gonna go through this in a little bit more detail with a couple of key points now. So, first things first here, as I freeze frame, you're gonna see a nice straight arm and you're gonna see that nice 45 degrees. So as I push through that pole, it's actually gonna be propelling me forward and up. So we've got a nice straight shoulder swing with the arm out in front. The other thing I want you to notice here is my posture. So I'm nice and tall, chest out, eyes on the horizon, really crucial technique points for Nordic walking and really important for general walking as well. You'll get to see one more glimpse of that. So again, looking for the nice straight forward arm swing and the posture. Next things we're gonna have a look at here again with the arm swing is the back swing. 
Okay, you can see that arm is right back behind me. And the other thing is to have a look at my feet and have a look at that nice big stride that I've got with a heel strike. So, if you are someone with Parkinson's, you should have a few alarm bells going off there because we've generated an exaggerated arm swing, a good posture, and a nice long stride, which, as we know, are key components uh, and key focus points for a lot of people living with Parkinson's. I want you to have a quick look here at my hands and, and you'll see that I've got a, quite a loose grip on the poles and I'm actually pushing off through the straps and you're going to get a better view of those straps in a second. This is another unique um, component of a Nordic walking pole compared to that of a hiking pole. So you can see I'm pushing off through the strap rather than through the handle. And you can have a look here. So I wanted to highlight this just in case you do have some hiking poles lying around and you think I can give this a go just with a normal hiking pole. That may not be possible to achieve that Nordic walking technique unless you have uh, a specifically designed strap like that. So in order to understand the benefits of Nordic walking compared to regular walking and also to understand the benefits of Nordic walking for those living with a neurological condition, I think it's really important to summarise the key points that sets Nordic walking apart from regular walking and, and really summarises the essence of Nordic walking and where the magic happens. And we can see it here hopefully through this drill. So we can see that powerful push off. We can see the engagement in my upper body compared to that of normal walking. As I said, we're swinging against thin air. And we can see decreased load through my legs as I'm engaging my upper body through pushing through the poles. So hopefully that's given you a very, very quick snapshot of the technique of Nordic walking. Now I'm going to throw it back to live Jason and uh, we're going to talk about all the benefits. Okay, well thank you past Jason. Um, nice challenge for me to sit there and listen to myself speak there for a while. Um, on past Jason, what he was talking about, engagement of upper body is the real um, is the real crux, I guess, of not walking. Um, as I said, if my previous past Jason said, we normally swing our arms against the air, which provides no resistance, therefore provides no propulsion. The engagement of the upper body and trunk is really important here. We have an exaggerated arm swing, can increase your stride length, and that comes with that extra propulsion. And it's a nice way to work on that posture as well, um, especially two things. One, if you're sort of finding that you're hunching forward a little bit, that propul or that having that pole there to push you upright can help. And also you might notice um, over time we lose a bit of um, trunk rotation. We get a little bit rigid through our trunk. So um, working on that rotation um, can be really helpful as well. So that is our um, key sort of summary of what Nordic walking looks like. Now let's look at Nordic walking compared to regular walking and think about the benefits. So hopefully, you know, having having seen that um, that demonstration, you've got a couple of things running through your head at the moment, um, considering what how you think this could be more beneficial. So the big one, um, I think, is is bang for buck and improving your cardiovascular fitness. So there's been lots of research on this, and what we know is that with Nordic walking compared to uh, w regular walking. This was studied by Church uh, and colleagues. There's an increased oxygen uptake of up to 20.6 compared to regular walking. So that's what I refer to as that bang for buck. You could be walking at the same speed, same intensity, so to speak, of someone with uh, regular walking without poles, but you're going to be getting a higher um, oxygen uptake and a higher um, caloric expenditure and a higher heart rate. So therefore, increased fitness benefits. Um, like I said there, so actually this is a, a different um, a study by Sigiyama and colleagues. They looked at Nordic walking at 7.7 kilometers per hour compared to running at 7.7 kilometers an hour. And they found that Nordic walking actually again had an increased oxygen up to uptake this time of 16%. Now Nordic walking at 7.7 kilometers an hour is a real challenge. That's uh, that's expert level. But just to show you um, that, that, that the efficiency and I guess the um, added effort that goes into Nordic walking. Um, there's also studies to show that, in, that uh, Nordic walking can increase weight loss, and this was by um, Heikiller and colleagues, and they thought this was to be due to the kinetic chain theory, which is that inclusion of arm muscles and that co-contraction um, as we sort of push through right side, left side is pushing out, so it's the co-contraction 
co-contraction, I should say, of the core muscles across the, across the trunk um, and increased muscle activity, th therefore increases metabolism, really important for weight loss. So that's kind of some of the mechanisms that can go into um, weight loss and, and the benefit. Sorry about that, I had a little issue with the recording there and I accidentally jumped forward. Uh, but just to summarize that previous slide, which for some reason I'm not able to go back on, was that is probably the most important benefit of Nordic walking compared to regular walking. And that is that we are seeing an improved cardiovascular response, therefore increased cardiovascular benefit of Nordic walking compared to regular walking. And how I put that is that is good bang for buck. Uh, if you're someone that maybe struggles to um, get up in the morning and struggles to fit in that exercise time. If you're doing 20 minutes of Nordic walking compared to 20 minutes of regular walking, you're going to get an increased benefit uh, with the Nordic walking. Um, so the next topic is improving gait efficiency. So this is another benefit of Nordic walking. So a study by Park and colleagues um, found that the Nordic walking compared to the um, regular walking group had an increased cadence, stride length, step length, and a decrease in their stride time and step time, and also a reduction in their ground reaction force. So that reduction in their ground reaction force means that there's a less, less of a load through their lower limbs, and that's because we're sharing the load through those arms. So anyone that has um, arthritis, osteo um, osteoporosis, or any sort of joint, lower limb joint issues, maybe hip knee replacement, clicky hips, whatever it is, we know that Nordic walking, although intensity is higher, higher and benefit is higher, it's actually going to save and reduce the force through those lower limbs. And when we're looking, I guess this is more of a rehab sort of um, scenario, when we're looking at gait rehab, we want to improve the walking endurance because that therefore allows for, uh, or sorry, we want to improve their gait efficiency, which secondarily will improve their walking endurance because if you're using less effort to get you from A to B, then you're able to do that, with that without that fatigue. Increases safety of walking. Now, put an asterisk on this because it's an interesting topic and I think it's probably one that you might already be wondering. Uh, so this was a study by Parcati and colleagues and they found that um, Nordic walking increases the safety and improves functional capacity compared to regular walking. Now, it's important that I, uh, the asterisk I put there is to, to refer you or remind me to tell you that that study was looking at the apparently healthy population. So people that didn't have a vestibular condition or a neurological condition. So those that don't already have a predisposition to falling or potentially um, have any issues with their balance. I have seen it go both ways. So in, in my history with working, working with Nordic walking, I've found that some patients um, can actually use the poles to their advantage. Say they catch their toe or catch their foot um, and they need to recover, they're able to bring those poles out in front and all of a sudden you've got two extra contact points and you've got some stability there. Others, having two extra things to think about can actually be a real hindrance. They can um, get tangled up in their feet. It's another two things to worry about and the balance in their walking can, can really fall apart quite quickly. So again, going back to my original statement around you know taking each, you, you, everyone's individual and everyone has their strengths and weaknesses. So um, we, we really assess this from my perspective, we assess people on an individual basis and, and for some people it's just not suitable um, and some people they just need a little bit more work. Point I wanna make, again, talking about the balance here, Nordic walking is not designed to be a gait aid. So if you're someone that uses a, a, a walking stick or a walker or a frame, usually Nordic walking poles are not a replacement for that. Walking sticks and walking frames, everything is out in front of you. You're actually putting most of the time, you're putting some weight through that gait aid to help you stabilize and help you keep upright. With the Nordic walking technique, as I've shown you before, especially given that the pole, the tips of the poles are behind you, that doesn't offer you any support. It offers you some propulsion, and as I said before, you might be able to get them out in front of you quick enough to provide some um, reactive support, but they are not designed to be a gate aid and to help you with your balance. So um, some people do find that the, the hiking poles are really beneficial for that, but again, that technique includes, well, encompasses that the poles are out in front of you and you're actually putting some, some weight through them and using them for support. So really important, um, fact or, or point that I wanted to make there, Nordic walking, not a gait aid, not helpful for uh, balance, unless you feel like you've got that skill and speed to get those poles in front of you.
Next. Oh, oh, one more point there. I've missed that one. Um, Carnarvon and, and colleagues found that this also reduced neck and shoulder pain. And again, this is due to just that general loosening up. So it increases the range of motion through your shoulder joints and it can increase the strength there as well. So another, um, another benefit there in terms of your gait efficiency and, um, and potentially some trunk involvement. Just trying to get to my next slide there. So moving on, another a point of Nordic walking, uh, I guess potentially being superior than regular walking, is that we can work harder, as I said before, the increased cardiac output without actually realizing it. And the only other, and the reason I've put a hydrotherapy picture in there, I don't know, my face is covering it at the moment. Um, the only other mode of exercise that I can find that has a similar response in that you can work harder without realizing it is hydrotherapy. So this is uh, essentially a land-based alternative. <coughs> we talk about when, uh, when I say working harder without realizing it, we're comparing RPE. So um, if you've been in the rehab world or exercise world, you will know that means rate of perceived exertion. So that is how hard you feel that you are working. At this study um, by Figured Faber and colleagues looked at, or they found that they Nordic walking compared to regular walking had a lower or equal RPE despite the greater energy expenditure. So working harder from a physiological point of view, therefore getting a, a superior physiological benefit without actually having felt like it. So anyone that suffers from fatigue or, um, or pain, again, this is probably steering more towards the MS population, um, then uh, uh, this could be a really good um, point for you if you're feeling like I want to be able to get out there and exercise, but the fatigue or pain gets in the way. Um, this could be a great way again to get good efficiency, a good bang for buck. Sorry about that, I'm just having some recording issues here. Um, and the fourth and final um, topic I want to talk about again: Nordic walking compared to regular walking. It's found to actually enhance mood. Um, this is again potentially through that cross-brain functioning, trying to coordinate um, left-right. So left leg, right arm, and trying to get that coordination. It is a it is a skill that um, that, that takes learning and takes developing. Um, so that was um, Stroughton and colleagues' theory that it was due to that cross brain functioning, and also just due to the fact that exercise we know enhances mood just in general, um, as does learning a new skill and conquering a new skill. We get that release of endorphins, therefore an increased mood. Um, so there's a couple of theories as to how that happens, but the research is telling us that. Obviously, exercise enhances mood, but Nordic walking specifically um, can have that impact as well. So with all of that in mind, I thought I would just touch on um, my, my bread and butter, which is the neurological population, and talk about the benefits of Nordic walking for our Parkinson's population and our MS population. Um, now, I know this may not be relevant to you, but I feel like there could be some potential benefits here that might ring true to you due to just the, you know, your general symptoms or, um, or or gait habits that you might already have, irrespective of, of Meniere's disease or the condition you, you have. So Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease, we know that uh, increases the amplitude of walking and improves posture and rigidity and improves arm swing and symmetry. So all key things um, that, that we are trying to work on in the rehab world um, from a Parkinson's perspective. MS related, we're looking at the assistance with that foot clearance. So people with MS often have that foot drop and they drag their feet, which therefore decreases their gait efficiency. Um, decreased load on their lower limbs. Again, lower limb fatigue or muscle fatigue is a key issue. Normalizing gait pattern I've touched on. Um, and again, I think the key point that I keep coming back to, and I know I'm hammering on about it, but increasing that cardiac output with a lower RPE, so lower rate of perceived exertion, therefore helpful for those people that do suffer from fatigue. I've got a very short case study here um, of a, a lovely lady with an MS um, who I do Nordic walking with, um, and she she was has kindly allowed me to um, insert this video just to show how we kind of specify and hone in that technique depending on the person and depending on their condition. So thank you um, to this lady for this, and I'll again pass things back to pass Jason. So I've asked Kylie now to push off harder with her left arm so that she's getting more extension or more backswing from the left arm and that's going to help her bring her left leg through and get that nice swing through so she doesn't catch her left foot if she's more affected on her left side. Looks good Kylie, keep pushing, nearly there.
Thank you again, Kylie. So again, just showing how we can sort of specify or, or um, target certain sides in, in Kylie's case here, pushing through that, that um, left pole to help get that left foot clearance. Um, so that might be something that um, is beneficial for you as well. So moving on to probably the part you've been waiting for the most, being that I am presenting to a Meniere's disease support group. Um, again, I just want to go back to my disclaimer at the start. Unfortunately, there is no research specifically surrounding Meniere's disease and the benefits of Nordic walking. Um, and unfortunately, nor have I had an opportunity to practice Nordic walking or uh, prescribe Nordic walking to someone with Meniere's disease. I have had um, experience and um, benefits, I would say, for from people that have had other vestibular conditions on top of their neurological conditions. So I have had success um, with with that patient group, uh, but just haven't had any specific um, any patients specifically with Meniere's disease. So my theory is whether Nordic walking can specifically improve your symptoms, your Meniere's disease symptoms. Now I'm speaking about, or whether it's just an accessible option for those with um, those with Meniere's disease. This remains to be seen. However, what we do know is that exercise is good. We know obviously one side of the world, one side of the field here um, is our vestibular, specific vestibular exercises that we know can be really beneficial for Meniere's disease. I'm talking more in terms of our general cardiovascular strength um, exercises here. We know that for the general population, it is required. It is a bare minimum that we do our exercise, but we know for anyone suffering from a chronic condition such as a, a Parkinson's, a MS, or a Meniere's disease, we know that potentially you are less active due to your symptoms or due to your condition. Therefore, if you are less active, you're at a higher risk of developing those secondary conditions, heart disease, stroke, those sorts of things. So getting your 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise, as are the guidelines from uh, the World Health Organization, getting that quota up can be really difficult. So if Nordic walking can potentially provide you with something that allows you to get into those higher heart rate zones and get your benefits quicker, then it might be a great option for you. Again, it might be something that's just a little bit more accessible to you than, um, than running or going to the gym or something like that. When, you know, it potentially is something that A, you can enjoy and B, potentially might be more suitable for you. So. The health, as I said before, the WHO guidelines are 150 minutes of moderate intensity or 75 to 150 minutes of vigorous intensity exercise per week. And we know that Nordic walking, as I said before, has an increased bang for buck. So if we can work for a less duration and work harder and therefore we're getting good bang for buck. So if symptom onset um, is preventing you from, from A, getting into that heart rate zone and getting those benefits, or B, preventing you from just that prolonged exercise, which, which we know is so important, Nordic walking could be a really good way to get that efficient, smaller doses of exercise in without symptom onset and other, um, other issues arising. Um, and again, Asterix should be there as well. There is potentially extra balance support needed uh, as well, because if you are sort of worried about dizzy spells potentially and vertigo issues, um, which may come on sooner or later during your exercise spell, you might be more nervous and hesitant to get out there and go for a walk because you feel like you could, you know, that, that risk of falling and um, is, that, is, is higher. So having those Nordic walking poles there as a potential extra support to bring out in front of you might be the difference maker for you actually having the confidence to get out there and, and do your regular walking and get that cardiovascular exercise in. And again, um, just on that topic, you know, we're, we're, we're not only working on the cardiovascular side of things here, we're building some strength through your upper body uh, and, and building good gait efficiency. So again, we're, we're ticking a few boxes here with, with something that is quite accessible and, and relatively um, straightforward as well. Um, I did sort of look hard at, at trying to find some good research articles on Meniere's disease. Um, and one sort of, um, one, one study that piqued my interest was by um, Pico and colleagues. Um, and they suggested that there are different types of balance problems associated with 
vertigo, including swaying, tripping, and postural instability. And their theory is that different rehab programs and exercises should be tailored to the individual based on those potential vertigo symptoms that you might ex be experiencing. So um, their, their plan, I believe, is to do more studies on this, and, and at least they've, they've started that. Um, so again, that might be, that's a bit of a watch this space because um, again, Nordic walking could put, potentially be a good benefit for someone that um, has that swaying or again, that tripping uh, mechanism associated with their vertigo. Again, just quickly uh, looking at some other potential conditions where Nordic walking or conditions and impairments, I should say, where Nordic walking um, could be beneficial. Some of these are backward research. Some of these are uh, theoretical, again, based off the authors from this research, but um, stroke, uh, functional neurological disorder, I personally have had some benefits and some success with. Um, traumatic brain injury, arthritis and osteoporosis. We know hopefully you, 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 you're cluing on to the fact that that can be beneficial due to that decreased load through your lower limbs and the shared load across the body. Um, and diabetes ha has potentially shown some benefit due to the strength, um, strength improvements and benefits that you get from this technique. So in summary, why should you add Nordic walking to your rehabilitation toolkit? Or at least I should rephrase it, or at least why should you give it a try? Uh, again, what's, what, what works for some people does not for others, and especially um, for, with Meniere's disease, the, the symptoms and the presentation could be incredibly varied from one person to another. So um, it's definitely, I'm definitely not saying it's a blanket, um, a blanket rule that this is going to be beneficial, but it's definitely, I would say, worth, worth uh, adding it into your toolkit. And again, it's not a replacement for a traditional rehab, and it's definitely not a replacement for your traditional vestibular rehab, which is quite obviously very targeted um, to you and your symptoms and your condition. Um, Nordic walking, I think, is a great way to maximize what you're already doing. So if walking is a key part of your exercise routine, why not ramp it up and uh, a couple of times a week do your Nordic walking where you're going to get increased bang for buck and increased benefit there. And again, you're learning a new skill, which is um, always enjoyable as well. Um, so how do we, or, or, or I guess the summary of why you would add it into your toolkit. So we have gait retraining as a major benefit, cardiovascular fitness, combination of gait retraining and fitness, and also something we haven't really talked about too much around the social benefits as well. You know, it's a very social um I'll call it a sport, a social sport or social form of exercise. We can get out there and find other walking groups, potential Nordic walking groups as well. Um, and potentially, again, you know, I found from, from my own experience with, with my patients who previously have found that they, you know, for, what, for, for one reason or another, aren't able to keep up with their, um, their normal walking group or their friends they normally walk with, therefore they feel a bit bad and they don't go out as often. So Nordic walking can improve their efficiency uh, and potentially help them sort of build up that speed uh, to catch up and, and, and to sort of hang with their friends a little bit longer. Um, so the social benefits are, are, are really no end with this one. So how to get involved, if you are uh, interested in Nordic walking uh, and you feel like it's something that could benefit you, then you can get in touch with us at Advanced Rehab Centre if you're in Sydney. Uh, and if you're not in Sydney, then I would urge you to have a look at nordicwalkingaustralia.com.au um, and you'll see there's a, a tab there that will take you to um, all the instructors in your area. Um, again, look, we, we are a neurological condition um, sort of specific rehab area, but that's not to say um, that we, 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 we wouldn't be happy to, to um, have you in and I wouldn't be happy to help guide you through your Nordic walking journey and get you started regardless of your condition. I have worked with um, people without any condition before uh, being that there's not too many Nordic walking instructors here in Sydney. So we have a couple that are, that are working with us um, in Advanced Rehab Centre. Um, it, how I would normally do it if someone was brand new to Nordic walking, I would do an intensive block of one-on-one -on -one sessions. So um, depending on sort of your, your condition or where, where you're at or how quickly you learn, that might be five sessions within a, a two to three week period where you're going home and practicing the technique. And then after that, if I'm happy and you're happy with, with how things are going, then I would just look to review you every three to six months, make sure you don't have not picked up any um, tricky habits or anything like that and to help enhance your technique so you're getting the most out of it. Um, we do plan to introduce a Nordic walking group. So we have a monthly uh, walking group um, in our time and in Sydney there, and we're hoping to expand that to Nordic walking um, as well. So that would be how to get involved. And if you wanted to um, touch base with us, then you could just email jason at arkhealth.com.au and I can point you in the right direction. Um, very good. I'm not going to read through our references, obviously. I can send that through if needed as well. Those are some of the references around the research I touched on.
here is where I would be asking you if you have any questions, but that is going to be done retrospectively. So um, I guess Anne will, will probably be in touch. We'll, we'll um, fill you in the audience as to how to get in touch with me um, and she'll put some links there if needed. But as I said, any questions that I'll be really happy to, to, to answer any and, and help you out um, as much as I can. Um, so my email is jason at archhealth.com.au. That's A-R-C health.com.au. Um, so thank you so much. Um, again, uh, uh, I'm, I'm apologies that I wasn't able to do this one live and, and have a little bit more interaction, but hopefully that's given you at least a bit of a summary of, um, of what Nordic walking is. Um, and if anything else, it's uh, hopefully um, given you a bit of an intrigue as to maybe something you can add in um, and potentially be a benefit to add to your toolkit. So again, thank you very much, Anne, for, um, for inviting me to present. Um, and again, any questions, guys, please let me know. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.